wanted to go over the Arnold Standard Surface Shader, just the basics of setting it up. So here we have just a generic Miocene. You can see we've got the Arnold Shader, and I'm using just a regular poly sphere and a regular poly plane, nothing fancy. So now if we look, what we want to use is the Arnold Standard Surface. So we go to Arnold, Arnold Standard Surface Shader. Here we have a new one. And you can see that the regular Standard Surface Shader is very glossy. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple setup for color, diffuse, normal map, displacement. There's the displacement, so we're looking at the shader here. You can refresh to get the uh, the added shader attributes if you don't see it. And we're going to start first with, we're just going to use a Mega Scans texture. I figured a brick texture would be great. Mega Scans is a great resource where you can get all kinds of maps for your, your texture surface shader. So we're going to hook up the displacement first. You can see here I just added a file and then we're going to add the image. We're going to locate that brick texture and I'm going to grab the displacement. Now there's two files, an EXR and a JPEG. You can see there's the EXR and there's the JPEG. And the difference between the two you can see here is the JPEG is only 8 bits, so it's very low quality compared to the 32 bit EXR. And we'll go over both of them really briefly. So let's just hook up the JPEG. So it's going to come on in and then do a quick render. Now we want to make sure the renderer is set to the Arnold renderer and I just have the default settings for size. And then just hit render and you can see we still have the sphere right now so we want to make sure for displacement in the shader itself. So if you just re-hit the input output just to relink the shader so here you can see the displacement shader Right now we got the file and then we got a 2D texture note hooked up into displacement shader area. So here you can see it's all hooked up. But we want to make sure that the shader is applied to the actual sphere. So if you select the sphere and right click and then assign existing uh, texture and then now we're hooking up the actual uh, standard surface that we've just put in. Now. In the displacement, we want to make sure that under the shape node, under Arnold, that you go to subdivision and switch it to uh, Cat Clark. Now we should see the displacement shader show up. So you can see we're seeing displacement, but it doesn't look correct. We've lost the shape of our sphere. So there's a couple things that we can do to try to make this look better. Under the file node, on the counterbalance, alpha gain we can lessen that amount so that the displacement isn't displacing as much now you can see we've gotten back the shape of the sphere in a much better area and then now alpha offset we can also tweak to make sure that this displacement shader is working properly so you can see now I, I've gone up and I've gone down and you can see it's either adding too much displacement or taking away too much displacement. So what we can do is there's an expression that I have learned that basically can help with this. So what we want to do under the file, we're going to rename this file texture to be, you know, a displacement material at 8-bit. Now what I want to do is I'm going to put in an expression in the alpha offset and it is equals minus 0.5 times the name of our displacement file dot alpha gain semicolon and that is basically what it's going to do it's going to take what the alpha gain is and then times it by negative 0.5 so that way your displacement texture will not only outwardly displace but also inwardly displace so that we have a medium gray image and it'll go both ways in terms of the displacement factor. And as you change the alpha gain now, the alpha offset will be changing on the fly with it. Now you can see the shader of the sphere is touching the ground and is looking much closer 
to what our original object is. And now you're just kind of figuring out how much displacement on this sphere to make it look like the brick texture that you have. So you can see here where we started, the newer and then the newest. And then you can just click up in this area to save each render or delete renders up in the top where it says Arnold render on the left of it. So now we can try doing the 32 bit. So I just selected it and deleted the hookup. I'm going to move these over and I'm going to create a new displacement hookup. So same thing, I'm going to go to that displacement area and this time I'm going to use the EXR, which is the 32 bit. And now that's hooked up. And then what we can do is we'll do the same thing here. So it's a new linkage. So you want to make sure the alpha game matches what we had before. We're going to rename this file node for the 32 bit. And then now we want to add that same string into the alpha offset. So equals minus 0.5 times the name of your file node uh, dot alpha gain semicolon. And now that's going to set up the expression over on the right. You can see it's turned purple. And now we can see how it looks. And the 32-bit is looking pretty good. You can see it's shrinking the sphere slightly. So something is not matching 100%. So we can go back. And it's close, but let me see. 0.25. So it's still eating inwards, then keeping the shape of the sphere. So let me just double check what I have here. So yeah, it's 32-bit, and it's actually set to sRGB, where for 32-bit EXR, we want it to be raw for the file format, the color space. So now let's do a render. There we go. You can see it inflated slightly, so that's looking better. And where we were and what we have, now I deleted the old one, and now I'm going back to the sphere. Now you can see we're matching much better to the actual sphere's shape. So this feels pretty much in line for the displacement. So I'm going to uncheck the displacement for right now. And what we're going to do is go back to it being just the glossy standard surface and I want to hook up a normal map so we can see what the normal map is doing. So go back to our sphere and then we want to go down further in the shader and we want to go to geometry, bump mapping, file, and then right now it's set to bump so with the normal map we want tan tangent space normal and we want to go up and bring the normal map. Here we go, there's our normal map. And with normal maps, it also wants to be set to raw file format for the color space. So here you can see we've got the normal map applied. No displacement right now. And you can notice that because the edges aren't going in or out. And what we're seeing is it looks like the grout was pushing outward instead of inward. So I turned off the uh, one of the color channels the, uh, from RGB so that it will go in instead of out. Now I rehooked up the displacements. Now we have displacement and normal. And you can see the addition here. Just a shader, normal, normal, and displacement. And the normal and displacement is looking quite nice now. Now we have a little bit of tooth to the brick. And now we're going to add specular. So we want to add a roughness map. Do another render. Now we have a roughness. And you can see it's very subtle. Before we had a little bit of gloss coming off of the sphere with the normal and displacement and with the roughness added we've lost that little bit of uh, glossiness. Now if I just turn off everything and now we just have the standard surface shader you can see it's a matte ball instead of being very glossy because of that roughness mask uh, that we put on. It's very straightforward. And then we want to rehook these up. So Control Z will go backwards. We'll have our normal and displacement hooked back up. And now what we want to do is we want to add our color map. So go to the color file, add the albedo, and RGB, sRGB is fine, and then render. 
And then here you can see we actually have the color map, the roughness applied, the normal map, and the displacement. And here's a very simple shader. Working with displacement and then going to albedo last is a great way to proof your texture. Now I also brought in a sky dome light and an area light to very simply light the scene. So nothing fancy is going on here. I'm using a just the perspective. What I did is I added a keyframe once I had everything where I wanted it. And here you can see the area light is just pointing towards the sphere just to make sure that there's a good angle on it to cast onto the sphere to get a little bit of shaping. But nothing fancy. Very straightforward setup uh, for this. I know this might seem very simplistic, but for some people, just going over the basics of how to set up a shader uh, is really one of the most fundamental tasks. And really making sure that your shader is working properly uh, in some of the areas that you might not be noticing, specifically the normal map displacement and roughness on the specular highlight. And thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, if you like this, I'll go over possibly simple shaders and other renderers as well, or delve a little bit more into some of the fine details of Arnold as well. So thank you.